Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I've got for you a cosplay by McCall's Pattern and this one I'm going to be doing is called Hitched. And it's this really great steampunk suspender type of skirt and I think it's a really great steampunk staple. It's already got that little bit of detailing and I think this would be great to like layer up as well. But for now we're just going to put together the skirt and this will be my first project back. So I'm happy to be back at my sewing machine again. I did do a little bit of a behind the scenes sort of vlog while making this skirt and putting it together. So if you want to see that and check that out, I will have that link down below for you. So you can see all the little mishaps that I've run into as well as a little bit of the process and you get a little glance of my new sewing space. But today I'm going to be making my skirt in a size 16, which is a little small, but I made it work. And this doesn't take too many notions, which is nice and makes it a really easy project. First thing that you want to do is you want to mark all your dots, your notches, and your center seams, center back seams before we get started. First piece you want to grab is your number one front piece and the first thing I'm going to do is not in the instructions. My fabric is a little thin so we're going to be putting our hardware on here. I want to make sure it has a lot of stability. So I'm just going to mark the line of dots where the hardware is going to go and I don't want this permanent so I'm just going to do it with my fingers and I'm going to grab just a two inch strip of interfacing and I'm going to lay this on the back making sure that crease I made is in the middle. And I'm just gonna iron this on and I'm gonna do this to both sides. That way my hardware has a little bit more to hold on to and my fabric won't kind of buckle under the weight of them. So this is optional if it's something that you're going to be wearing quite often. So going back to the front now, I'm going to grab my D-rings and I want to grab two and I'm going to place two D-rings on each dot, not including the square dot. I'm going to hand sew on the sides and in the middle for each one. Then I will grab my ribbon and I'm going to cut two 16 and a half inch pieces. Going to one end of your ribbon, you're going to do a small rolled hem. So I just fold it over about an eighth of an inch twice as evenly as I can. And then I'm just going to clip it down to hold it in place. I'm going to sew down the middle or as close to that folded edge as I can. That way you have a nice finished edge. Going back to my front piece, I'm going to fix all my D-rings since we're going to be working with them. I'm going to take the other raw end side with the wrong side of my ribbon to the right side of my skirt and I'm going to line it up with my D-rings and you want that top raw edge to start at that square mark that you made. Pin this down and do the same to the other side. Then I'm going to thread the ribbon through all of my D-rings. And I will sew these on at an eighth inch under the ribbon edge. Going to my back ruffle pieces, I'm going to lay them right sides together and I will pin up one side. Sew these together at a 5 8 inch seam allowance and then iron open the seams. So we will be doing this process a lot in this video. So that's the basics for this step. I'm going to fold up the bottom edge of my ruffle 
3 8 inches and iron it down all the way across. You can measure this with a ruler or I just like to eye it because I do it so often so I usually get it pretty even. But you can definitely use a ruler to mark this out. Then I will fold it up another 3 8 inches to create our 5 8 inch rolled hem. Same thing, you want to iron this all the way across. I'm going to sew down this folded edge at a 3 8 inch seam allowance or just before the edge and then I will do gathering base stitches along the top. Going to the back piece, I'm just going to fold this in half real quick and I'm just going to mark out my center with my finger here. Then I will grab my ruffle and with right sides together matching up the seam to my center mark. I will pin these together first matching raw edges and I'm going to take one side of my ruffle and I will start to gather it pulling on my two threads. Now if you've never done ruffles before I have a video I will link down below for you that it goes way in more detail on how I specifically do my ruffles in any case. So you can go ahead and watch that and that's basically all I'm doing each time I make a ruffle in this video. So once you get your ruffle to the size of that bottom curved edge, you're going to distribute your gathers evenly throughout that little section. And once you're happy with the placement, you're going to pin everything in place. Then you want to do the same thing to the other side. Sew this on at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. I'm going to open up my ruffle making sure that that seam allowance is facing up toward my skirt piece and I'm going to iron this in place so that it's nice and neat. I'm going to call this section 1 to help any confusion later on. I'm going to go to my middle back pieces, laying them right sides together. And at the center back, I'm going to pin them together. Sew this edge at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Iron open your seams. And then I will do a half inch stay stitch or a basic stitch all the way across the top. Taking my number 9 back stay, same thing, I'm just marking out my center back here. And then going back to my number 8, I'm going to lay these pieces both right sides together with the top of number 8 and the bottom of number 9. So the curve should be opposite. So I'm going to start matching the centers. And then from here, I'm going to take my time and go about an inch or two of fabric matching up the edges and pinning it down as I go. So you can kind of maneuver the fabric a little bit to match these awkward curves. It's just going to take a little bit of patience and a little bit of pulling and maneuvering. But you can definitely get these to match up. So this stay stitch is going to help that uh, top edge from getting all warped and everything like that. It's going to kind of keep it more stable for you. So that's the significance of doing a stay stitch, especially with this large curve that we're doing here. 
So you're gonna do the same thing to the other side. Once you have this curve pinned together, we're gonna sew them at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. I'm going to cut off half of this seam And then I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna place some clips into the seam allowance, making sure I don't cut past that seam allowance holding the pieces together. So this is gonna help that curve relax a bit so the fabric will lay more flat and it won't be so warped. So I place them about an inch and a half to two inches apart. We are then gonna iron our seam allowance up toward the top of this piece. So we're going to repeat the steps with the number 10 ruffle pieces. Lay them right sides together, matching up one side, pin it together, sew it at a 5 8 inch seam allowance, do your gathering base stitches on the top, and then your 5 8 inch rolled hem on the bottom. So going to the bottom of this section now, we're going to match that center seam on the ruffle with the center seam of that skirt piece. And then gather up your ruffle, distribute the gathers, and pin it all in place on both sides. Sew this at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Iron the seam allowance of the ruffle up toward the skirt to press it all in place. And now I will call this one section two. Taking my number 13 stay pieces, I will lay them right sides together. I will pin up the center back side. Sew this at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Take the number 12 lower back pieces right sides together, matching up the center back. Pin this as well. Sew this at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Iron open the seams. And then taking my number 12 lower piece, we are going to do the stay stitch on this one. And then once again, right sides together, top of the number 12 and bottom of the number 13. So the opposite curve should be together. And you're gonna pin this up once again, like before. Sew this together at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Trim off half of the seam allowance. And then go ahead and place some more clips into the seam allowance as well. So we have a lot of repeating steps so far. Iron the seam allowance up toward the top of this section of the skirt. So this will be my section three. So we're gonna lay this right side face up. And then taking my section two, we're gonna lay it on top right side face up, matching up the top edges. Then grab your section one, same thing, laying it on top, matching up the upper edges. So I'm gonna start with these side edges and I'm gonna make sure everything's lined up neatly and pin it all together. Thank you. 
Then I'll go to the top edge and I'll pin this together. And same thing on the other side. Sew these at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. I'm going to lay my front piece right sides together with the back skirt piece, matching one side first. And then I will do the same on the other side. Sew these at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Going to my 14 lower ruffle pieces, lay them right sides together, pinning each end. So it's kind of similar, we're just adding more pieces this time around. And I actually didn't read the instructions. You were supposed to do all four together to make one giant circle. So you can go ahead and sew it into a circle now and save yourself the hassle. Sew these edges at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. And then iron open the seams. So we're going to do our gathering base stitches on the top and our 5 8 inch rolled hem on the bottom. So this ruffle is going to go all the way around the bottom. So each of the four seams is going to match up with one of the four dots that you marked on the bottom edge of the skirt. So it might be best to do gathering base stitches starting and stopping on each strip rather than all the way around. I do it because I'm used to it but it might be easier to gather up each section than to do one giant ruffle. But you basically want each section to match up to the edge of each section of the skirt. Distribute your gathers evenly and then pin it all in place. And this is what you should have once all that is completed. And we will sew this bottom ruffle on at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Going to my 13 stay pieces for the lining. I will once again match up the center back edge, pin it together, grab my number 12 lower back lining piece, taking the center back and pinning it together. Sew both of these at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Iron open your seams. Do your half inch stay stitch on your number 12 lining piece and we are just repeating the process of putting these together. So number 13 will go right sides together with the bottom and the top of number 12 meeting the centers first. Pin up the curved edges, sew it together at a 5 8 inch seam allowance, cut off half of that seam allowance. Place in your clips into the seam allowance. Iron the seam allowance up toward the top of the skirt lining. Then take your front piece lining, same thing you want to match up those sides on each side and pin them together. Sew these at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Iron open the seams. Taking your lining piece laid wrong side out, grab your outer skirt layer and do this right side out. Then you're going to place the outer skirt inside your lining skirt so that you have right sides together. I'm just going to go ahead and match up the side seams just so that I can help organize the way the skirt is laying. Keep it from twisting around while I work on the bottom. Start by tucking up the ribbons into the D-ring so that that way it's out of the way and we don't get it caught in any of our sewing. You're going to fold up the ruffle toward the skirt and then you're going to take the lining, 
matching all the seams and the dots so that the ruffle is sandwiched between your skirt and your lining. You're gonna go ahead and pin these raw edges together all the way around. We're gonna sew this whole bottom edge at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. I'm gonna place clips into my seam allowance. Since we have a lot of curves here, I wanna make sure it lays nice and neat once we turn it out. Then we're going to turn our skirt right side out. And then you're gonna tuck the lining back inside of the skirt. And you wanna match up the waist area with your side seams and your notches and pin this all the way around. I'm gonna go back to the bottom of the skirt. I'm going to lay out the skirt edges neatly away from my ruffle and I'm gonna press this all in place so that way nothing's moving around too much later on. Base this top edge at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Taking my number six yoke front, I'm gonna lay it right sides together with my number five yoke side front. So each number five piece should go on each edge of the number six piece. And you want to make two of these because one is going to be your lining. Sew these four edges at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Iron open your seams. We're gonna take one of these sections, laying it right sides together with the number seven yoke back, and you're going to match up the right side and pin this together. Sew this at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Iron open the seam. Grabbing our zipper, we're gonna open up our zipper, and I'm gonna iron the teeth away from the fabric of the zipper. So you can see here that I'm rolling the teeth away so it's opened up. So make sure you have the correct iron settings for this and no steam. And we're just giving a light press just so that they lay open by themselves. That way we can sew this on a lot easier. Do this to both sides. With the front of my yoke piece face up, the pull tab of my zipper should be right sides together. The teeth should be facing toward my yoke. And the raw edge of the zipper should match the raw edge of my yoke edge. I want to lay my teeth at the 5 8 inch seam allowance and I'm matching up the top of the zipper with the top edge of my yoke piece. Pin this down and then I'm gonna use my zipper foot to sew this on. Make sure that you stop at the dot that is marked on the yoke piece. I'm gonna close my zipper so I don't get confused. So I'm gonna go grab the other side of my yoke section and I'm gonna lay my zipper open so that raw edge of the other side meets the raw edge right sides together with the yoke edge. Same thing, you want the teeth to line up at the 5 8 inch seam allowance and the top edge of the zipper to the top edge of the back yoke piece. And then I will pin this down 
and you're going to sew this on in the same way, making sure to stop at that bottom dot. So at this point, I'm going to zip it closed, make sure that it zips up easily and nothing gets caught before I move on. I'm gonna tuck the last bit of the zipper up out of the way. I'm gonna meet the bottom edges right sides together and pin it up. And I'm gonna sew at a 5 8 inch seam allowance, making sure that I go just outside that white dot and do a little back stitch, just like so. Then open up the seam allowances to match the back edges of the zipper, making sure the teeth of your zipper line up with that center seam. Pin the sides of the zipper to the seam allowance only. And you're just gonna go back and sew the rest of that little bit of zipper down, making sure you're only sewing it to the seam allowance on both sides. I'm going to take my number seven yoke back, right sides together with my yoke front pieces, on my lining and I'm going to pin up the opposite side that I did the first time and then I will also pin up up until the small dot on the right side. Sew this at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Iron these seams open. Fold up the bottom edge 5 8 inches and iron it all the way around. With my skirt now, I'm going to take my lining yoke, turn it inside out. I want to match up the zipper sides. I'm going to place my skirt yoke inside my lining yoke. Matching up my seams and zipper openings. Pin the top edge all the way around. Making sure your zipper is open. Open up both of the seam allowances matching that raw edge together because you want to sew these open, not fold it over. Sew this at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Cut off half of your seam allowance. Open up the lining and I'm going to go into the inside of this so that you can see a little better. You want the seam allowance to face toward the lining. And we're going to do a top stitch at a 1 8 inch seam allowance all the way around, making sure that you're catching that seam allowance underneath the lining section. On the zipper sides, you just fold it over at that seam allowance and sew it folded over. Turn your lining out. Fold over the top edge nice and neatly all the way around. And we're gonna press this all in place to keep it all from moving. And that top stitch is gonna help keep that side from coming up as you wear it if you have experienced something like that before. It just helps keep the lining in place. Starting at my zipper openings, I'm going to make sure that the edge of my lining matches just behind the teeth of the zipper, and I will start pinning all this in place. When you do line up that folded edge, make sure it's not too close to the teeth. Otherwise the zipper will get stuck in it. So make sure it's just a little bit behind the teeth. So you can kind of see the zipper tape underneath just a little bit. So you wanna pin those edges around the zipper and then you're also gonna go through and you're gonna make sure that folded edge of the lining 
meets that seam allowance from the main skirt. So you might have to fold it a little more or a little less as long as your lining is nice and neatly flattened out as you're pinning it. Go ahead and just fold up the edge to match that seam allowance. That way the edge of the lining covers the seam nicely so it has a nice finish. And then you're gonna do a ladder or slip stitch sewing all of this down. At the bottom of the zipper, just make sure you sew right across the bottom there so it has a nice closed edge. Grab your hook and eye and you're gonna sew one on each side of the top edge here at the zipper opening. And at this point, your skirt is done. You have a great new steampunk skirt. It has a lot of repeating steps, so it's a very easy pattern, just as it says on the package itself. I really didn't think anything was too difficult. It had a lot of really great basic stitching techniques. They have those big curve seams, which might give you a little problems, but you do it so much that you'll probably really get it by the end either way. You just have to take your time. And depending on your fabric, it should be pretty forgiving to make those curves work. But otherwise, I love it. I'm happy I have a new steampunk piece of clothing that I can now have whenever a steampunk event comes up. We all know how things are going in the world. We hope a lot of things. But if you really like this tutorial, then go ahead and give it a thumbs up or let me know in the comments. Make sure that you subscribe if you haven't already and then you wanna hit the bell to make sure that you get notified when my videos get uploaded. Thank you so much for watching and I hope that I see you all in the next one. Bye.